Nothing irritates me more than a tourist trap, and today I wanted to go over the top places on any Caribbean cruise you should avoid at all costs, because they're terrible. Up next. Hey everyone, it's Matt from RoyalCaribbeanBlog.com. I fell in love with cruising because of the places you get to visit. Whether it's a city or an island or both, there's some really cool places to go to, especially in the Caribbean. For a lot of people, a Caribbean cruise is an escape from the weather and just the doldrums of everyday life. But I think a lot of people want to go somewhere and do something fun that isn't completely overrated or worse, a waste of your time. Now, when you go to any of the ports, it's your choice where to go. You could go on your own and book your own tour. You could book a tour through Royal Caribbean, or you can simply walk off the ship and explore and wander. Either way, there are good choices and there are bad choices. We can sit here and debate every single tour that's out there, but I came up with a list of about half a dozen absolute tourist traps. What is a tourist trap? A tourist trap is something that draws people in, but it's usually worth about 30 seconds of your time, and pretty soon you realize it's just made for tourists, it's artificial, there's no redeeming qualities for it. Think of it like clickbait in the real world. And there are plenty of them because at the end of the day, a lot of tourists come through these places and as entrepreneurs around the Caribbean have figured out, there are some ways, some marketing to get people to stop in. Now, depending on the port you're visiting, there may or may not be more of these than other places, but generally speaking, some of the bigger, more popular cruise ports have their fair share of them. And I came up with a list of places that I think I will, first of all, never go. And second of all, I think are just totally overrated. And more importantly, I don't think you should waste your time or money going to. So let's start off with number one, and that's Atlantis in the Bahamas. Now, if your cruise ship visits Nassau in the Bahamas, there's a very good chance that you're going to see many tours that go to Atlantis. Atlantis is one of the most popular Caribbean destinations in the world. It's a world famous hotel. Michael Jackson made this place famous because he had like a hotel room that he stayed in for like all year round or something like that. But it's become famous for being famous. And on top of that, the pricing, if you want to go there, has become astronomically expensive. I'm all for paying a little bit more to go to places that are kind of cool. But some of the excursions that you find for Atlantis, the pricing is just outrageous considering the time you have there and what you can do. On my upcoming cruise on Allure of the Seas in November, there is a option to go to Atlantis and swim with a dolphin and go to the Aquaventure water parks. It's a combo deal. The price for one person is $465 per person. It's insane how expensive this is. And while Atlantis doesn't fit the bill of a true tourist trap in the sense that we're going to talk about with some of these other places, the pricing of it and the fact that some people think about it initially is why I put it on this list because there's just no reason, in my opinion, to go there. I get it's a nice hotel. There are much better alternatives. Resortforaday.com has some great day passes that will cost you way less than anything you're going to find in Atlantis. It's easier to get to than Atlantis, and they're equally as enjoyable, and you'll have a good time at one of those. Check out resortforaday.com as a good alternative. Number two on my list is Senor Frogs, and this is Senor Frogs in any port in the Caribbean. If you go on enough cruises, and I'm talking maybe about two, you're probably going to notice this recurring theme of you go to these ports and you see Senor Frogs. And they put them right usually by the pier as you walk on and walk back off the ship. And there's a reason why they put these right by the piers at many cruise ports, and that's, of course, to suck you in. Senor Frogs has mastered the art of drawing people in with this promise of a party, but what you end up getting, really, is one of the worst bars you could possibly visit in any cruise port. First of all, everything in there is super expensive. It's kind of weird when you go to a country like Mexico and you're paying the same prices or worse for drinks and food that you would get back in the United States. Never mind the fact the food is totally mediocre. I don't know about you, but when I go to these amazing places around the world, I want to have authentic food. And I get that not every place is like the best possible authentic food out there, but it should not be like TGI Fridays when you go there. And that's certainly how mediocre the food is at Senor Frogs. Then there's the low quality liquor that they serve up there. And some of it tastes like straight up gasoline. Now, what they're really selling at Senor Frogs is the party vibe that you go there. You get the balloons that they tie and make into ornaments and hats and swords and things you can wear. And then they have the people that walk around and shoot tequila in your mouth and do all these kinds of things. But they're really just trying to get you there so that you'll come in, spend money, probably get drunk as well, and then be on your merry way. But the fact they have to rely on being right at the pier tells you everything you need to know about how compelling this really is a choice for you. There are plenty 
of great bars you can find in any port you're visiting. And more to the point, you're gonna find better values and better food and better drinks somewhere else. Now, if you want a party vibe, I get that. And there are gonna be other places to go to. Now, because there's senior frogs in so many ports, I can't give you alternatives all the time, but a good idea is to ask a crew member. As an example, there's a great bar in Cozumel called the No Name Bar. No Name Bar is downtown, and it definitely gets a party vibe there. In fact, crew members go there to party. But the bottom line is that there's always gonna be a good alternative. So ask crew members and search in the cities that you're visiting, just Google around and try to find a good place that is not Senor Frogs or Margaritaville for that matter before everybody puts that on the list because they're basically the one and the same. It's just not worth your time and certainly not worth your money. Next up is Hell in Grand Cayman. And this might be the poster child for Taurus Trap. So what is Hell? Well, in Grand Cayman, there's a small rock formation that they built an attraction around. And let's be honest, if they called it anything other than Hell, no one would want to go there because the entire appeal is that you can say you went to hell. Seriously, like you can take a postcard or take a photo and be like, hey, look, I went to hell. Ha, ha, ha. This is the very definition of a tourist trap. Now, if it's part of your island tour, which they usually do this, a lot of times you'll find tours that go to different places like Stingray City, Hell, Turtle Farm, and maybe some other place. That's one thing. But there is zero reason to go out of your way to visit Hell in Grand Cayman. You are much better going almost anywhere else. Stingray City is very popular to, of course, swim the Stingrays. I would prefer to go to one of the amazing beaches on Seven Mile Beach in Grand Cayman. And that is an amazing spot and really, really gorgeous. Hell, no matter how much you like puns or dad jokes, it's just not worth it. The next thing on my list is Maho Beach in St. Martin. So Maho Beach is the name of the beach that you've probably seen a photo or a video of an airplane coming really close in to land right over the beach, right before it's the airport. Princess Juliana Airport is situated right at the edge of the water. And there's a small strip of sand you can go to that has a beach over there. And people love going there because the airplanes have to come in really low because it's, the runway's not very long and there's a mountain on the other side of the runway. So they've really got to hit the brakes quickly. As a result, airplanes come in very close to the threshold and it seems like they're right on top of the people that are landing there. And you're going to find all sorts of people who wade into the water or by the beach itself to try to like, you know, be as close as possible. And there's a ton of great photos. It's certainly, if you see the photo on Facebook, you're kind of thinking to yourself, wow, that does look kind of cool. Except it's a huge tourist trap because it's a one and done kind of thing. First of all, the beach is nothing spectacular. There's much nicer beaches in St. Martin to begin with. Number two, there's few facilities of anything around there. So even if you were to go there, you're gonna find it kind of just nothing to do because it's just a strip of sand. There's no resorts or anything built up there because of course they have to make way for the airplanes. So you're not gonna find much in the way of food or drink or anything like that. Although there is a bar within walking distance away, which is famous for if you're topless, you get to drink for free. I'm not making that up. Anyway, the bottom line is there's much nicer beaches and I get the idea of wanting to see the airplanes there. But first of all, there aren't airplanes all the time. This isn't JFK in New York or Hartsfield Jackson in Atlanta that has departures and arrivals all the time. Number two, while the photos may look cool, I gotta tell you from experience, it's very underwhelming going there. And number three, your time is better spent somewhere else, one of the more nicer beaches to enjoy a more relaxing day that's truly gonna be gratifying for you. I think you're gonna find Maho Beach underwhelming and it's why it's on my tourist trap list. Next up on the list is the most Southern point in the United States over in Key West. So Key West doesn't get a lot of cruise stops, but they are famous for being the southernmost point in the continental United States. And if you go to a specific place, there is a large formation, it's a, I guess, cement monument, if you want to call it that, that they put up there. And of course, people want to take a photo with it. Odds are when you're in a Key West, it's going to be extremely hot and humid, and you're going to have to wait a long line to take a photo with an inanimate object that sits there and says, hey, look, I was at the southernmost point. Does it really matter if you actually got to the exact most southernmost point, even though it's not actually, because I'm sure there's like a pebble or a buoy that's a little further away or something like that? Regardless of that fact, it's overrated. Again, not worth the wait. There was absolutely no wait there and you can stop there for 30 seconds, take the photo and move on. Okay, but that's rarely the case. So I got to put that there. Also on my list is Costa Maya, the port of Costa Maya. And I don't mind the things that you can do once you get out of the port, like in Mahawal, there's some great beaches to go to, but man, the port area is probably the worst tourist trap in the academic sense of the word. The port has been designed to literally trap you. Have you ever tried walking out of the port of Costa Maya? In most other ports, it's pretty straightforward. You walk off the pier, you walk through maybe a couple shops, and you can find the exit pretty quickly. In Costa Maya, it is a literal maze to get out of there. First, you have to navigate through a couple different shops, 
come into the main, I guess, plaza area, which there are tons of shops and a giant pool and a pole that people climb on and dance around. And there's all sorts of animals you can go and see and all sorts of distractions meant to keep you from actually leaving the port area. But even if you're great at wearing blinders and skipping all that, you still need to walk through an endless cycle of stores in order to get out of there. They didn't build a direct path to exit. Rather, there's a meandering path that takes you all through every single store before you can get out there. Now, there's a little bit of a shortcut. If you find the gelato store, you can cut through the gelato store and cut off about 15% of the walk, but it is so long. Now, unfortunately, there really isn't a way to get out of here other than going through the maze. That being said, I would tell you that if you are going to do something in Costa Maya, number one, don't do anything in the port area. It's a waste of your time. Plan an excursion in advance somewhere else. As you all know, I love Maya Chan. Jamie's at Blue Reef. There's a lot of cool places in Mahawal to check out. But try to get there early. A lot of the real pizzazz and craziness doesn't start until a little later in the morning. So get off the ship early. Walk through as fast as you can. Don't stop for anything. And get out of there as soon as you possibly can, as fast as you can. And hopefully no one will lure you in with to one of their shops or specials or quote unquote deals that are out there. And the last tourist trap in the Caribbean I want to talk about on this list is Duns River Falls in Ocho Rios, Jamaica. Duns River Falls has been around for a long, long time. And I think maybe at one point it was kind of cool. I mean, the idea is cool. It is a giant waterfall that you can go to and climb up and be right in the waterfall. Sounds great because of course you get to chill out in the water. It's cool. You can go right into the waterfall. What could be wrong with this map? The problem is the crowds are absolutely overwhelming. You're going to end up, first of all, going in there and holding everybody's hands together. They make you go in like a human chain. Second of all, your group isn't the only group there. There is going to be a ton of other tours there. And whatever photos you've seen of some random family there by themselves, that's not a thing. When you're there on a cruise day, there's going to be dozens and dozens of tours there, and it becomes absolute bedlam. So if you're looking to cool off in Jamaica, a much better idea is if you don't mind the long ride there, Blue Hole is far less developed, far less crowded, and an equally beautiful, but not more beautiful place to go to. Sometimes Royal Caribbean offers tours there on your own. So there you go. There is a look at the worst tourist traps in the Caribbean. I am certain that I missed out on some really good ones that should have made this list. Let me know in the comments below what you think are the absolute worst waste of time on any Caribbean cruise in the comments below. While you're below our video, hit the like button, subscribe to our channel, and turn on notifications. That way, YouTube Plus, and we have a brand new video to share. This has been Matt from RoyalCaribbeanBlog.com, and we'll talk again real soon.